I'm Sadie and this is my evening barn routine with two horses. This is Chester and I am going to get him tacked up so we can take him for a nice really late ride because it has been a million degrees here and the sun is going down so it's a little bit cooler. It's still 2000 degrees but we're going to try to get a workout in real quick. So let's throw the saddle on him. He's already a little sweaty because he's been outside grazing all day and he's had the option to come inside but he has chosen to stand outside in the sun instead of under his fan so he's already a little sweaty before we even start our ride. This is a master lightweight saddle. Of course you'll see it in a few minutes in action and if you watch all of my other videos you'll see it. I have been loving it. I can hold it up over my head. Chester has very much been loving it and if you Mention me, Sadie, when you order, you get a nice little discount, so make sure you go take advantage of that. It's a little cooler. It's like, it feels like it's only 95 degrees, so we're cooling down a whole lot. It was 105 earlier today. Okay, he is all tacked up, so we will see you down in the arena. Before I hop on, I tighten my saddle and we are ready to go. As you can see, the ground is not in great condition. It is very, very muddy and pretty deep. So we are just going to trot today and he to try to take off. But once I was like, hey, you know what? We are not going any faster than a trot on this because you will slip and die. So I just really trot around, switching directions. I try to give him a really wide turn since it is so sloppy and a little slick and he is always trying to kill dogs even though she did not do anything to him so just ignore that he is just rude and if you watch me you know I don't normally post the trot on him so for me to be able to do that on the world's hottest barrel horse I am actually very impressed with him so I trot both ways back and forth like this without stopping for around 10 minutes asking for a nice extended did try it really get him picking up those feet and covering some ground here. I try to stay out of his mouth as much as possible. Of course, when he tries to take off, I do have to kind of guide him back down to earth. But other than that, he is doing really, really good. And then I sit down and ask for a stop with no hands, which he does. And he decided to stop on the back end today, which I was really impressed with. Normally he stops on the front end and that looked pretty nice. I walk him out, really just cooling him off. I hop off, loosen that saddle and pet him because he did good. Chester got really hot and sweaty and very muddy during our little ride. I didn't lope him because it was so sloppy and he's a little crazy so I didn't want him to pull anything because he does have a race tomorrow. Not that I would let him pull anything anyway but we are going to give him a nice bath to help him cool off. He definitely gave his hoofs a nice mud mask so we're going to be sure to get that off. He also ate mud for whatever reason. So I take the water hose and really try to blast all of that mud off of his hoofs and to my surprise it came off really easy so that was nice. Once I have the mud off the front hoofs I work on his body. We are going to give him a full bath so I make sure I spray him everywhere and once that is all good I get his back hoofs and he decided to poop for me so that was really really nice of him. The mud comes off of the back hoofs really well and then I get the tail wet because we are going to wash it too. Now we are going to get him shampooed and once I have him shampooed and his tail shampooed I'll rinse it off and then leave some conditioner to set in his tail and then rinse off so his tail is nice and soft and looks really pretty for his run tomorrow and I also bought these nice little sponges to really sponge off where he gets sweaty on his face because I don't like to spray them in the face that much they don't love it. So let's go get him shampooed and rinsed off. I'm trying to hurry because I know he is dying to eat dinner. This day was probably the hottest one we have had this summer. So he's been getting really sweaty in the pasture and he got really sweaty during our ride. His butt gets the dirtiest for some reason. So I'm gonna put a lot of shampoo back here and let it run into his tail. And I'm gonna put a little bit of shampoo in his tail already. Now we can start really rubbing that in. My little glove thing. So I did put a lot of shampoo since he has been getting so sweaty and we rub that in and I get it in his mane too. And he kind of enjoys the scratch from the glove. 
Okay, let's get that other side. I just do the same exact thing over here using a little more shampoo than I normally would and I really rub it in, making sure to break up all that dirt and sweat and nastiness, especially where the tack goes. And now I'm really gonna get his chest because he gets sweaty there in the pasture and especially when we ride because of the breast collar. So I like to really get where all the sweat builds up. Here I am really, really rubbing it in. And once I'm done with that, I go and move that shampoo down in his tail and he is being so dramatic about it. Now we can rinse him off. He is looking just so excited about this whole experience. <laughs> When I give my horses baths, I love to absolutely make sure I get all that shampoo off of them. If you leave it, it can get really itchy and irritate their skin, which we do not want. So I spray him off for a really long time until the water runs clear and I don't see any more little bubbles coming off of him. I know, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Which, rinsing him off did push a lot of shampoo into his tail as I knew it would, so we really have to rinse his tail too, and I run it until the water runs clear again. Now we're going to put the conditioner in his tail and let it sit to really work out any knots or tangles that might be in it. I'm trying to hurry. This conditioner is really going to work to get out any knots and tangles. They have been really having to use their tails to swap flies, so it gets them a little rattier in the summer. Quit. That's rude. While that conditioner sits, I put on my new Hawk Ice 5 boots to see how I like them. So he gets a nice treatment. While that is going to, I get his face sponged off with this nice little sponge. And I think he kind of enjoyed it. And I got a lot of mud and dirt off of there. So I think I'm going to be doing this after every single ride because he gets really sweaty around the brow band. But I can't spray it off. So I think this is going to be a really, really good alternative alternative to really fight all of that dirt and grime on his face. While those ice vibes are still going and the conditioner is still in his tail, I'm going to brush it out. That way the conditioner can really help get those tangles out. For their tails, I like to use a wet brush that is for people. I find that this works really well to not yank their hair out while normal mane and tail brushes really pulls their hair out, at least in my experience. And then his ice vibes are done when I'm done brushing. So I pull them off. Once they are off, we can rinse that tail out getting all of that conditioner out of there so it's not itchy or anything and then he is ready to go in his stall. Now that Chester is clean and back in his stall, actually he went out in his pasture, we are going to get the two very very hungry horses their dinner. They both get salt normally and I'm also going to add some powdered electrolytes to Chester's because he worked tonight and got pretty sweaty. <laughs> so we're going to add that just to make sure he is all good. Tight gets one and a half scoops of feed while Chester only gets one. So you can tell the difference there. I sprinkle some salt on there. And then, like I said, I put some powdered electrolytes onto Chester to really replenish what he sweat off. And then I wet it down. So I also know they're getting some water with their feed and it makes it softer and easier to chew. Since Kite was already in his stall, I put his pan in there first. Chester. Chester. I don't know where he is. Chester finally decides to show up and start munching on his dinner while he's eating. The cat is all over our shavings, really jumping around. And then he decides to go chase a fly around before taking a nap in the middle of the hallway. Here's a look at Kite really enjoying his dinner. When Chester is done eating, it's time to clean his stall because he is the grossest of the two, but they're both really not that bad. So I pick it out, making sure to get everything Thing because Chester does spend the night in his stall so I want it to be really comfy in case he decides to go to sleep so I make sure to get every single thing out especially so he can lay down and I don't have to worry as much about him being covered in stains in the morning especially after we gave him
them a bath so I really just sift everything out and I've decided to switch them to shavings instead of the bedding pellets because I think the bedding pellets are just too dusty so we are slowly switching from the pellets to all shavings so I bring in a bag because it is time to put a bag in here since they have mats I don't over bed their stalls I don't have to worry too much if you can see a mat through the bedding I spread that out and now it is time to make sure he has clean water so I dump both buckets because just like his stall is a little messy his water buckets are messy so I bring them into the wash rack dump out that water and then spray them out really really good with the water hose as powerful as it can get once I'm done with that I hang them back up and make sure he has two really full buckets with clear water for the night When that is done, I throw a flake of alfalfa into a stall for him to snack on and it is time to bring him in for the night and here's a look at that nice clean stall. Chester! I don't know where he went. He's not normally out this late so he's probably enjoying it. Now that Chester's stall is super clean, he has a fresh bag of shavings, he has two really clean buckets, and a flake of alfalfa, it's time to get him in and shut him in. That way Kite can get to go out for the night. He's eagerly waiting, so hopefully Chester will show up soon. The second I turned the camera off, he showed up. So. Let's get his door shut. While Chester is in for the night, Kite gets to go in and out from the turnout, so let's go get him a fly mask. A fly mask on you. This will keep any mosquitoes and other bugs out of his eyes while he is happily grazing all night. Are you excited to go outside? Let's go outside. Whoa. Kite. Look. A wide open door. Don't run over the camera. It is, you can't see it. It is currently 10 p.m. and we are about to clean Kite's stall. Kite was out the whole day, so this is all we have to clean up and I think he would be happy with the back of shavings. So we're gonna go ahead and add one after we get it picked out, but he is really not that messy. Chester comes in to use the bathroom because it's just his giant litter box. <laughs> Kite's buckets were not dirty at all, so they didn't need to be dumped, so I just fill them up and then I shut his stall door so he can't escape, and I bought some more shavings, so I'm going to bring them in and put them next to our alfalfa, and this is the last thing we have to do tonight, and I am very ready to be done. Alright guys, that was my very, very chaotic night routine. I hope you enjoyed this video because it was very interesting to film. And I will see you next time. Bye.